Bonjour à tous. Hello everyone. How are you doing? So today I am going to compare two amazing products. Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 3 Cine. I got hold of this Mavic 3 Cine for a couple of days and within that I have to decide whether I am going to keep it or not. Now before I start let me clarify one thing. I am here to compare those two drones and I am going to check particular functionality of those drones and that is high dynamic range, low light situation. I will not talk about tracking and normal image quality and spec and everything because there are hundreds of videos available for that. In fact, there are great videos available for the Mavic 3 Cine that shows amazing sunsets and beautiful colors. But there is no videos where I have seen there is realistic comparison done between Cine and non-Cine version and that's what I want to check. And I have not seen also videos where a real situation was tested like really a sunset or sunrise where the light is really tricky. Most of the comparison are daytime, you, you flat the drone and see what the quality is. But honestly, on the daytime, anything can good, get good pictures. I mean, even my mobile and the camera, you cannot see a lot of difference except some bokeh and all this stuff. So to me, those are not valid comparison. So this comparison, I'm going to check on real life where I face issue with my Mavic 2 Pro, what happens with the Mavic 3. Now, why do I need a new drone? I already have the Mavic 2 Pro. It's a good drone, takes good photo and videos. So what this Mavic 3 is going to bring new? The only place where this Mavic 2 Pro suffers a lot is high dynamic range, low light situation, which is basically sunset and sunrise. Now, me being a landscape photographer, that is the most beautiful light I can get. And normally when I take those pictures or videos using my R5 or R6, I can really push those videos in post and get realistic look out of it. Now, that is not possible that much well in the Mavic 2 Pro. The shadows, when I pick up the shadow, it, it, it kind of creates a lot of noise. The highlight falls apart a bit. So I'm expecting that Mavic 3 having bigger sensor, I will probably get some advantage out of it. So that's what I want to test today. Now, one thing to mention, the Mavic 3 does not come without its disadvantage. It has this amazing ProRes and 5.2K, but none of them works if you want to really do the tracking and all those intelligent flight mode. It seems that DJI thinks that none of the professionals who are going to needing those amazing formats or resolution require that, that, that type of functionality, which to me is completely nonsense because it, 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 it's just nonsense, right? I know DJI is releasing a lot of firmwares. Maybe in the future we will get that. I have not heard this in any of the videos. I've seen a bunch of videos about Mavic 3. Nobody's really mentioning and specifying that one, but please understand that. If you want to use those intelligent modes, the option for you is 4K. You cannot use that 5.2K and you cannot use that, uh, that uh, Apple ProRes uh, codec. The only thing you have is H.265, H.264 and 4K. That's it. Okay, different frame rates are available, but to me, this is a big disadvantage and I'm really hoping that there is a firmware coming soon to, to fix that. Now, we have a great light today. I hope we get some good sunset lights. And so let's fly the drone and see how they do. Take off. No Please check it on the map. So the flying part is done. Already from the back of the controller, I can say that the Mavic 2 Pro looks way worse than the Mavic 3. Now, in the Mavic 3 as well, the DLG looks way better than the D-Log. But now let's go back to the digital darkroom and find out how they actually looks after doing some good processing. So see you there. Okay, now let's look at the processing of the videos and some more details. Now, as you can see, I have actually pushed those videos quite a lot just to understand how much details it can keep if I push the files really hard. Now, what I can see is that the details here are amazingly beautiful. Now, one thing that surprises me a lot, all the different codecs, how much detail they preserve. 
I cannot say that much of difference with the naked eye. The only place where I can see the difference is at this place. You can see that here in this small place where the cloud was lit a lot by the sun, the details are gone when I am in the HEVC. But that looks very different in the different ProRes coding. Now, there is absolutely no difference between the three different ProRes formats, ProRes HQ, ProRes and ProRes LT. Now, when I look at the D-Log image, things are a little bit different. I can see way more noise there. Now, D-Log starts at ISO 400. Even though Mavic 3 has way bigger sensor, ISO 400 is still not as good as ISO 100 of the HLG. Yes, surely I can do some little noise reduction and things will look good. But if I look on a skeptic note, this is not very good. The story of ProRes versus HVC is same in D-Log as well. There is almost no visual difference. However, at that time, that very brightly lit cloud was gone. So probably we cannot see that much of a difference. But if I look at those car lights, they are very tiny and it is almost impossible to understand the difference there. Now, without getting into the details, of course, as expected, the file from the DJI Mavic 2 Pro is way worse, definitely worse of all. It's manageable, but once you look at some of these, you will definitely not like to use that one. Now, one thing I should mention is that the D-Log of the Mavic 2 Pro gives an option to suit at ISO 100, something that I would really expect Mavic 3 to also have. I know all the technical details of why the log is having a base ISO and all kind of stuff, but the reality is that it is way more noisy when the video is taken at ISO 400, if it is pushed in the post a lot, and if there is high dynamic range situation where you need to underexpose the shadow quite a lot to keep the details in the highlight. If the same is compared to uh, ISO 100 image, the quality of the image, the crispness of the image is way better. And this is visible not only on 100%, but also in the smaller version of the video. Now, if you are watching in a mobile phone, you will probably not see that much of a difference. I am watching it in a bigger screen and I also watched it in a 55 inch TV and the difference is quite prominent. In fact, I have asked one of my friend to tell me which one is better and what is the difference. He couldn't tell me the difference between the different HLG formats. He actually chose this one as the best image, but I don't think it has anything to do with the color. It is rather to do with the composition. Now, consistently he and my wife and also my son said that this D-Log image is not very good because they all saw the grain in it. Now, again, when I showed them the same thing on a mobile phone, they could not make that difference. Okay, now let's have a look at the file a bit. First thing to notice is the size of the files. As expected, the HQ files are massive with the file size going down for ProRes, LT and HVC being the smallest. But at the same time, it is important to mention that there is a difference in bit rates. The ProRes HQ has a bit rate of 1534 Mbps. The normal ProRes has 1020 Mbps. The ProRes LT 707 Mbps, whereas the HVC has only 141 Mbps. To be honest, for a 4K 30 FPS file, 141 Mbps is good enough, as long as the compression software is well designed. But there is a flaw. All the ProRes formats have 422 comma subsampling, whereas the HVC only has 420, same as the Mavic 2 Pro. Basically, that means the HVC is capable of recording less color details. They are all 10 bits file. For example, my Canon R5 and R6 records at 10 bit 422 in the C-Log format. The D-Log files have exactly same characteristics, except that they are recorded in BT709 whereas the HLG being HDR are recorded in BT2020. 
So, what do you guys think? Honestly speaking, I'm pretty impressed. The image quality of the Mavic 3 is unbelievably nice, especially if it is compared to the Mavic 2 Pro. The 422 brings a lot of color. The inclusion of the ProRes is also very good, especially on those very high dynamic range situations. So I'm kind of inclining towards keeping the drone. Of course, those complaints are still there. I hope DJI is going to come up with a solution. Those missing functionalities will be fixed soon. But overall, it's an amazing product. Normally, when I do this type of comparison, I upload the files that are used for the comparison in the Google Drive and share a URL in the description below. But in this case, I can't do that because those files are unbelievably big and I cannot keep my Google Drive occupied permanently with that much of size. So if you really are interested on having a look at those files or play with that or see the properties and everything, please write in the comment below. I'm going to upload those files temporarily in the Google Drive and share a link so that you can download those files and once you are you have downloaded them i will delete them we hope it was helpful and if it was please give us a thumbs up that means a lot to us and if you have not done it already please subscribe and press that bell icon to get notification of our upcoming videos last but not least stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you again